Welcome to the final part of our Big Problem 3-3-A. This has been a doozy. I hope you've made it this far. And if you have, congratulations. I guess if you've watching this, by definition, you've made it this far. Anyway, congratulations on having made it this far. We've done adjusting journal entries. We prepared an adjusted trial balance and we just prepared financial statements. And now we've got one last thing. So part A, adjusting journal entries. Part B, prepare an adjusted trial balance. Part C, do financial statements. And now we've got to do this mysterious thing called a closing entry. The good news about closing entries is mechanically they're easy to do the bad thing is they're kind of like confusing like what is happening here so to do it i'll look at our adjusted trial balance this is what we're going to close and what a closing journal entry says is some accounts not all some accounts need to start again at zero so if you think about like how much money we're making right if i say well how much money did i make in you know 2020 you know, the year ended June 30th, 2029. I got to start counting how much money I made again for 2030. I got to start again from zero. Like if you think, how much money did you make last year? Well, when you say, how much money do you make this year? You start counting again at zero. If you made 40,000 last year and you made 50,000 this year, you start counting the 50,000 from zero. So companies have to start counting stuff again from zero each year. Now, not everything starts again at zero. My revenues start again at zero. My expenses start again at zero. My dividends start again at zero, but my debts don't start again at zero. I don't get to call the bank and say, hey, it's a new year. Let's reset my debt to zero. No, nope, we don't get to do that. So a closing entry will reset. That's the word I use. Revenues, expenses, and dividends to zero through, whoa, through retained earnings. Now I'll explain why through retained earnings later, but for now, just go with me that we reset revenues, expenses, and dividends. We make them zero. We force them to become zero because we want to start a new year. We want to keep score from new. We want to start a fresh scoreboard here. Uh, and we do it through retained earnings. So let's make revenues and expenses go to zero. So here you can see my revenue is 499,000. My adjusted balance of revenue is 499 credit. How do I make that go to zero? Well, I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to debit a revenue account to make it go to zero. So on June 30th, 2029, this is one of two closing journal entries we'll learn to do. I debit, uh, security rev by $499,000. Hideous revenue, hideous <laughs> handwriting. Uh, I credit all of those expenses. So, and we just have to write them all up. Credit salaries expense to make it go to zero because it's a debit balance to make it go to zero. It takes a th credit, three, two, one, 500. I credit interest expense. The amount is twelve fifty. I credit uh, depreciation by forty. I credit supplies expense by forty seven hundred. I credit repairs by 17,000. I credit insurance by 8,000. Uh, I credit rent by 60,000. and I credit income tax by seven. Okay, and what we will find is when I make my revenues and I make my expenses go to zero, the journal entry doesn't balance. It, the debits don't equal credits. So let's figure out how much we're off by. And what we do is we plug whatever we're off by into retained earnings, just force it into retained earnings. So uh, my total debits here, 
Now this is, maybe I should do it in different ink just to say it. Like you wouldn't have to write this and you wouldn't want to write this particularly, but you want to know the numbers. So our total debits is $499,000. Our total credits is... 321500 plus 1250 plus 40000 plus 4700 plus 17000 plus 8000 plus 60000 plus 7000 our total credits is 459 oops 459 450 and so you can see that we're off and how much are we off by minus 499 oh, oh, oh. we're off by 39550 oh, we need 39,000 more on the the right hand side so whatever we're off by we just put it to retainers if we're missing by a debit we would debit retained earnings but we're going to because we we need to credit this to make a balance we credit retained earnings by 39550 and that should make it balance and you maybe ought to just re-add the um credit column to see if it works and of course it will 321500 now plus 1250 plus 40000 plus 4700 plus 17000 plus 8000 oops 8 plus 60 thousand plus seven thousand plus three nine five five oh equals forty four hundred ninety nine thousand so now my debits equal my credits beautiful i closed revenues and expenses to retained earnings your professor might do this to an account called income summary that's totally appropriate that's a fine way to do it there's lots of different ways one could do this i do it the the straightest line and i just put it right into retained earnings uh the other thing we have to close though is dividends june 30th 2029 we're going to make our dividends go to zero our dividends were ten thousand dollars i got to make that go to zero so to make dividends go to zero we credit dividends by $10,000 and we plug the balance through retained earnings, $10,000. And there we have it. We've done our closing entry. We've reset revenues and expenses to zero here. We've reset our dividends to zero here. Now, if, if that's all you're asked, and that's likely all you'll be asked is just to like do a closing entry, you've done it. But if you kind of want to know like why retained earnings, what are we doing here? You got to actually look at our financial statements. So let me pull these over. Uh, let's do this. I'm just going to copy them and paste them. See if this, see if this works. Uh, let's put the financial statements right beside here. bad sign oh it worked okay it was like very slow and coming so what i'd like to look at is these retained earnings amounts so based on our revenues and expenses we credited retained earnings by thirty nine thousand dollars based on our dividends we debited retained earnings by ten thousand dollars now take a look at your statement of retained earnings we said when we prepared our statement of retained earnings we add net income so our retained earnings goes up by $39,000 because of our revenues and expenses. That's this journal entry. We've said in our statement, we want retained earnings to go up. Well, you gotta do a journal entry to change an account. This is the journal entry that makes retained earnings go up by 39,550. And you can see the amounts match perfectly. You can also see we want retained earnings to go down because of dividends. Well, that's this journal entry so that's the reason for the closing journal entry we're saying revenues and expenses make retained earnings go well up in this case dividends make retained earnings go down but of course we're saying retained earnings going up and down the only way an accountant can make anything go up or down is with a journal entry so these are the journal entries that cause our statement of retained earnings to take shape so i wanted to show you the reason but if you were like ah uh, you know what there's been a long problem i've kind of lost the plot all you need to know for a closing entry is you're going to reset your revenues, expenses, and dividends. You're going to force them to zero, and you do it through the retained earnings account. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you make it to the end of these, for goodness sakes, hit me with a thumbs up. That was a lot of work. I hope it helped, and I'll see you in our next video. Bye-bye.
I enjoy the work, by the way. <laughs> I, I think I sounded like I was complaining. I like doing it. So it's, it's fun for me. And I hope it was uh, uh, reasonably interesting for you. Okay, now we'll say goodbye. Bye. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.